So I think that's playing now. Um, hello again. I'm here for another tarot reading, and you're probably here for that as well. So here we are. Um, so yeah, it's been a little wet, so I've been trying to get my table to not be so damp. It's been kind of rainy where I'm at, and uh, yeah, it's been like kind of humid and rainy and kind of a little too hot in a way. But it's not that bad. Though. So yeah, so um, whatever you have, whatever intention that you um, want to know, any question you want, a little bit of clarity on situations, anything of the sort, if you're thinking about anybody, um, just think about it and then we'll get started on it, okay? Alright, so just take a moment to pause the video and we will we'll get started on it. There's cars everywhere. If you're thirsty, make sure you grab something to drink as I shuffle the cards, or even before I shuffle. Came out King of Cups. Maybe I could hear the words emotionally exhausted. Or I get the words worth it. Oh wow. I feel like something happened where it's either you or somebody or whatnot made a decision and you made a decision and whatever decision you made fully made the whole I wouldn't say tower fall but like cause like when I was shuffling the cards I did see a tower card but um I feel like whatever happened or whatever you know kind of whatever made its way to um however it is now like whatever happened and whatnot it basically like kind of blew the house down. So whatever occurred in that moment. Whatever decision you made, two cards popped out. We have the chariot card. Uh, wow. It's not so much like, you know, huge major arcana, but we do get some um, powerful cards coming into play here. This one flipped over, so I'm gonna take this with this one. I get some weird feelings here. Like I see, um, with the King of Cups in reverse, I see that you're no longer giving your emotions to something or giving in to something, or like, like I get the words like kind of like I'm not um, doormat or dog shit or. Um, and there's two cards actually underneath it, so let's clarify this. Oh wow, the Ace of Cups in Reverse. So whatever was ser not serving you, um, whatever, you know, kind of was kind of holding you back or making you feel, I feel the words like emotionally exhausted or maybe you just felt like you couldn't really, um, what's the words, like, you couldn't understand why, um, you know, like I get the words, I don't know why, like, I don't know how a person or people could be so mean or just be so... Um, manipulative or untrusting like I feel like somebody did you dirty sorry my bunny my bunny's like to kind of look at the gate and then look and see what I'm doing but um I sense that you're very like kind of like it's not like you didn't expect it to happen but the way it happened you didn't expect you know the uh, chaos the drama to ensue and you just don't want to you're like done with it so you're like no longer trying to put energy and time into it um, because you know that your your sanity and your uh, mental health and how you feel and stuff like that should take over top priority over like this dramatic situation. So yeah, and I see it's because like it wasn't giving you uh, the correct amount of balance. Like it wasn't giving you at all a steady state of mind. Um, I sense like up late at night. So maybe you were up late at night. Um, hurting really bad, you know. I even sense the words restless, so maybe you couldn't sleep a lot because of what was going on, whatever this drama that ensued. Um, 
and like I see the scales so like I think when I think of scales I think of law or I think of um, you know justice or balance or whatnot but I'm thinking law so I don't know uh, maybe law is something that is kind of like coming up in your life right now and then there's like also too like this man's giving him coins but in this reverse, it's like those coins are giving it to him. So I sense that maybe somebody's taking um, some money away from you or like kind of, you know, financially draining you at this moment. Or in the future, they are going to be draining you if they're not doing it now. Um, and if it's not just money, I think it's also too just like your energy. You know, they're trying, I feel like someone's trying to break you down in hopes that you are worn down and you just will give in to them. But like, you're tired of giving in to them and you're tired of giving in to drama and things like that because you realize now like you're at this point right now where you're like I'm not happy I shouldn't be um, sad or angry or tired or you know upset all the time I should be you know I should have like I feel like your life is right now a, a very it's out of control you know it's not stable I sense that you're not really having a very stable life right now um, and, you know, I feel like maybe somebody's taking money away from you or taking things away from you or, you know, it's like kind of like ruining, I get the words financial ruin. Um, so someone's really ruining your life or trying to ruin your life right now. And, um, if it's not a person, then maybe it's some people. I get maybe like people close to you, family members possibly, um, doesn't have to be by blood, you know, family isn't always just by blood, but, um, I sense, like, there are people that are, like, kind of ruining, you know, you, and, like, I feel like it's kind of, like, it's upsetting, because, like, you feel as if you gave so much time and energy, and, like, you gave this person, or these people, or everything, like, I sense that you gave in, uh, people your all, and they're not really giving that sense of support back, or that sense of happiness, and reassurance that you thought you deserved because you were always there for them but I also get to that um, if it's not just that but like people are kind of taking advantage of you at the moment um, also to in a financial sense like I sense somebody really kind of ringing down with legal fees or legalities trying to like weigh you down and stuff like that um, and I feel like you're very mad you're very angry you're very upset um, and then like we get onto this chariot card so I sense that because of this um, because it's like two like the white and the black sphinxes like balance here I do sense a lot of balance like I sense like kind of ruler or um, kind of final ruling maybe it is if it's legalities this is a judge you know it kind of reminds me of a judge in a way just because of the uh, podium and everything like that but that's what it kind of reminds me of. But I feel like it's not just like that, but I feel like you've decided to be the judge of your life as well, too. Like, you're not going to make people feel like they could decide your ruling or your life. So you could be taking charge in a situation. You may be trying to start your own business. I get those words, too. Um, you know, take what resonates. Uh, I also sense, too, like you're trying to make it on your own and trying to be independent in a way and I'm not saying that you're you know you could be the person that's not really dependent on people but like you're trying to get to a point where you could say that you are independent and that you don't need to depend on anybody or that you don't need to have somebody depend on you because I sense too like with also this financial drain that like maybe you have like family members who are borrowing money off of you uh, you know if it's not family, friends, close people, you know, partners, whatnot, like, I feel like people are, like, borrowing money off of you, or trying to get as much money as they can out of you, or just kind of, like, manipulate you in a, a weird way, you know? You have the Eight of Wands here. What you're not seeing, or what you fear, is obstacles. What you fear is not having a clear path your way. What you fear is not being able to slice those things right through your pathway you know you fear that you're not able to um and it's kind of funny too because there's the eight of pentacles in the bottom of the deck you fear not being um able to work up to 
um, being independent, you know, your goals in life. Because, like, it seems like, excuse me, I wanted to yawn. If you're tired, please go get some rest. Um, but um, I feel like with every tree you cut down that's in your way, fucking eight trees pop up. And, like, you feel like that. You feel very tiresome about it. But the thing is, is that you're working hard to get through that barrier. But also, too, like, you fear, um, you know, those barriers will still be that, that there will be some sort of barrier. But the thing is, that, like, I feel like it's a great thing that you feel that way because you're allowing yourself not to control it. With these Eight of Pentacles, you may get up to be a point, or maybe you are up to the point where you can't let it, you know, affect you. You can't let it affect your life, your outcomes, what you want out of life, you're willing to work really hard to get through these obstacles here, and that's really great, because, like, also, too, we have the Nine of Swords, and, um, the, sorry, someone's beeping the car, um, Six of Swords in reverse, so I sense that, like, like, too, like, it, it sucks, like, you are in a sense of pain and hurt, by what has happened and stuff like that. You are in a sense of, like, worrisome nightmares. Maybe you're getting a lot of nightmares and stuff like that. But the thing is, is that it's not just, like, you feel as if, if you just let people take advantage of you, if you didn't make a stand or make a certain decision, then you would regret it the rest of your life. And now you've made that decision, and despite it being difficult and hard, and you may have some sleepless nights and very upset, but I sense that there's like this sense of pride or no longer regret in doing that. Like, you understand it as hard work and that it hurts. But the thing is, is that you're not running away from it anymore. Like, you're deciding for yourself that you can't run away from it and you can't like let people control that outcome or let people do that outcome. Because it's like we have the Nine of Swords upright and the Nine of Cups. You know, this is like kind of like I am kind of content where I'm at, you know? I don't give it a darn diddly to if you think that I'm this way or if you think that I'm that way, you know, I feel happy, you know, like some people may see you as arrogant or not really seeing other people's point of view or being like one-sided, but the thing is, is that you've, I feel like you've already looked, and like this is with this period, you know, I feel like you've already looked at so many ways that this could come out, you know, so many outcomes and stuff like that. But you chose the outcome where your heart was. I feel like you made the decision with your heart. And, like, you feel as if this will be a decision that it is hard, but it is totally worth it. And you'll feel very successful that you decided to do what you felt like your heart wanted to be. Because now you feel like your heart is in its place. And it's also made you kind of a little bit wise, too, about it. And I, the reason why I'm saying that is because, like, if you are one of those people that are easily pushed over, it gave you the experience of, like, yawning. So if you're tired, please, you know, like I said, go take a nappy. But, um, yeah, like, you get a sense that um, it was worth it. And we have cycles closing out feeling kind of victorious and like this is sometimes people think of this card as kind of sly or maybe feeling you know kind of regretful but I feel like a sense that you feel like you're not like the big old chat you know uh victor but you feel a sense of pride in the sense that uh you did what you wanted for a change for because you wanted something stable you wanted a happy thing you know you wanted balance in your life, a balanced home, balanced people, balanced partnerships, balanced this, balanced that, you know? And, like, the thing with that was really holding you back that made you feel very tied up, you couldn't see the truth all the way, was these addictions, was these, like, like this very, maybe it was a toxic lover, but this toxic lover here, you know? With the lover's card and the devil card, like, some sort of, like, contract, you know? Uh, so contract, you know, breakup, parting ways, um, with this devil energy, because, like, it could be, you know, if it, it's not a romantic thing, then it could just be, like, familial, or, as I said before, um, other close, uh, connections, but, like, 
you feel like this person treated you at, like shit in the end. Like you feel like, yes, this thing was complicated, whatever happened, but like you feel like, honest to goodness, they didn't have your interests at heart, but only theirs. And I feel like they maybe have told you many lies or they fed you a lot of bullshit to make you believe um, what they believe or try to get you in some way. But like, I sense this person, I wouldn't say is um, but they're kind of, like, I get this a little bit, like, I do get this narcissistic energy, but I also get, like, this, like, masochist, um, like, they like, it's very creepy, it's very weird, but I feel like they like it when you tell them off, or when you, like, tell them to fuck off, because it's kind of, like, it gives them that, like, that toxic feeling, like, that satisfaction, and, like, I feel like, too, in some ways maybe this is not for all others but I feel like in some ways maybe you liked it for a while you know you liked that spice that sass but for other people you know maybe you just kind of um, always kept like you know brushing it off as something else and not them being what it actually was like them being mean to you or them like not hearing you out you just brushed it off as like oh you know they're having a bad day or oh you know they have a lot going on you know like um, that's why they freaked out, you know, they're stressed out, but the thing is, is that when someone's mean to you, someone's mean to you, and you kind of realize their, uh, the patterns, but it became, like, a very, you know, long road, like, intuition, the high priestess, and, like, two, black and white, balance, like, you had to really trust your intuition for this, and, like, you got tired of carrying other people's burdens and other people's worries and stresses and problems like because you realize that you want to be your own person with this knight of wands here you want to come into your own energy i'm trying to find we do i do see the world card in reverse so like some sort of cycle or some sort of thing is um in completion in a way like maybe if it's not in completion, then you're working hard towards completion. Um, and then, like, I also see, like, the six of cups upright with the kids. There's, like, these two kids. We also get the magician here manifesting good energy. Temperance card. This situation requires your patience and stuff like that. But um, I feel like you've decided that you can't really let people control you or, or make you... Um, the complete, because uh, I feel like someone's maybe really painted you as a villain, or as the uh, sole per, like the sole reason why everything went wrong, that you were the problem and everything, instead of the fact that they did wrong and blamed you, because that's what they wanted to do, you know, they don't realize, or maybe they do realize, but they, you know, are a little bit fucked up and thinking that, oh, you know, like, I can do whatever I want, and then this person will never, you know, turn their back on me, you know? Like, I could say whatever they want, and they'll never... Because, like, I just get this very manipulative energy. Um, you know, maybe they blackmailed you a lot, like, you do this or else kind of, kind of deal. Um, maybe they made you, um, painted you out, like, I get this picture of you, if it is a partner, or friends, or whatnot, or family, or whatnot, imagine you in a group of people with the person, um, or with people, if it's a variety of people, um, imagine you out with them, you guys are cracking jokes and everything like that, and then one of them, or the person, or whatnot, they say something, and they're complaining about you, um, uh, but, like, let me give you an example, This is kind of a weird example, but it came to my mind, cups. So maybe you broke a glass or a vase. And, um, like, the, the one person's showing off that, you know, like, look at my new vase and stuff like that. And, um, people are like, oh my god, that's a cool vase, and you're standing right there. You're like, yeah, that's a cool vase and stuff. And you're thinking, you're smiling and stuff like that. And then the person goes, yeah not really my best vase or you know because you know this person broke it and never apologized for it 
or um, yeah they're kind of ignoring me or they've been kind of weirded out because they're mad because I yelled at them for breaking my vase like something really like kind of shady or like kind of stinging like that like a sting like that or um like situations like kind of like those petty things like there's no use in calling out or like if they were yelling at you the whole day um and just being nasty to you or being moody or being mean to you you're out with people and stuff like that um and then they're like yeah, no, this is cool, and they're all, like, nice to these people, and you're right there, and then they're, like, they say something, and then, um, they're talking and stuff like that, and you don't say anything into their response, and, like, you look at them, and they look at you, and then they're just, like, why aren't you speaking to me? Or, um, somebody says, oh, you know, I had a rough day, and then you're like, oh, yeah, I had a rough day, and then this person butts in, yeah, you know, they've just been mad at me all day, so they're just not speaking to me, and, uh, but it's whatever, you know, or, like, if they crack a joke, and you didn't either, like, I could, I could just really, I picture this right now, you're walking, you're in a group of people, you're walking, this person cracks a joke and you honestly didn't hear them maybe the scenery like the music is too loud or something like that or your mind is elsewhere and stuff like that and you didn't actually hear them out and then they look at you and they're like what's what what's what what's with you and then you're like what and then they're like i made a joke and you didn't laugh and then they're like and you're just like kind of like what's going on and you're like oh well i didn't hear you i'm sorry i was in my own world and then they're like well, it seems like you're always in your own world. Or, yeah, of course you didn't hear me because you don't listen to me all that time. Or, um, they make it a big deal that you didn't laugh at their joke. Or even if they say, like, something funny that you didn't find funny or that you found very hurtful, like, especially about you, like, they make a dig about you, like, oh, yeah, they're just trying this new, like, hair thing out today and they, like, make fun of your hair but they're like doing it in a joking manner, but it makes you feel uncomfortable. And then they look at you like, they're, it's just your hair, you know? Like I could send somebody making fun of somebody's hair. I don't know why, um, but I get that. And then I feel like at the end of the day, you tell them that you're hurt or you know, that was kind of upsetting that they did that. And then they're like, we'll just get over it. Or maybe they just keep bringing up situations or things that make you feel uncomfortable. Like I sense, I sense somebody snapping at somebody and then somebody crying in response. So maybe you've cried a lot. Um, and you've like got tired of snapping back and the, even the saddest part too is that when you fought back, they knew how to make you look like public enemy number one. Or if you gave it back to them, they put on this big puss face and it's like, Oh, I didn't mean to. I'm just having a bad day. Like, why would you yell at me? Like, I get that a lot, too, you know? People, whether it be family, partners, friends, if someone's making you feel like, you know, that they're the victim and that you are the asshole of the year or of the lifetime, then there's, there's no reason that they should be doing that. And there is also, too every right for you to say to them leave me alone you know no one should ever put you in that place and you have every right in your being to stand up and stick up for yourself but i feel like these people this person or whatnot or whatever it was you know they never heard you out in that way um or like because like i can even picture them right now they're like sitting here and then they're like you know then they really think about it, and they're like, you know, I didn't really mean to be so nasty, you know, and, like, I'm sorry and whatnot, and, like, I'm, like, I'm just having a bad time, and I just want to talk to you, and blah, 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 blah. like, I can imagine somebody on their, their phone, or, like, trying to talk to them and giving, like, a sad face, like, I can imagine them, after this reading, doing that right now, and then, like, you look at your phone, or you see them again, and honestly, in your heart, you don't feel anything. 
because there's been so many times that you feel like it's just an act, you know, they're just going to do it again, they're just going to go into this constant cycle of making me feel and look bad, and I'm tired of it, I'm tired of them making me feel stupid, that I'm worthless in some ways, or that I'll never be good enough, you know, or that I'm not smart enough, or that I'm not, I even get the words pretty, so maybe they made fun of your looks, maybe they made you feel like you are ugly. Um, if it is a relationship, then I sense too that they made you feel very down low. Um, like maybe they would openly flirt with other partners. Or like people's, uh, like if they saw like this hot person on, you know, social media, they would like their posts or something like that. And like it made you feel at the end of the day that no matter what you did, no matter how hard you tried or working out to shed a few pounds or like, you know, put on like pretty dress and, and did your hair and, and, you know, or made yourself presentable, at the end of the day, you always felt never good enough for them. And you felt that for a while. And I feel like in a sense of life is that all you want is for someone to look at you and think I am enough and that there's nothing wrong with me. And there isn't, there is nothing wrong with you. Don't ever let people think that there's something wrong with you, because there isn't. If anything, I'm not gonna say that there's anything wrong with them, but what I am gonna say is that they don't really see you as an actual person. Or they might be very conflicted and very insecure about themselves that the only way that they could cope is by bringing you down because they don't know how to deal with the issue or the problem at hand because sometimes people do that sometimes people bring people down just because they don't know or have any other coping mechanisms they're spoiled in a sense of not learning boundaries or making you feel as if you aren't good enough for anyone, or anything, you know? You are good enough, and you are beautiful, okay? So, if anyone tells you otherwise, or if anyone makes you feel like you're anything less, then just click on this video, get to 27 minutes, and just hear what I have to say and just listen that you are beautiful and you are worth it and you are smart and you are good it's not that you're good enough you're perfect okay so I hope that helped and I'm not just saying these words just to make you feel good but I do hope that you know you take some time, you look yourself in the mirror, and this is what I used to do, because it's not like I, like, hated how I looked or whatnot, or, because, like, I grew up, uh, my mom, my dad always telling me that, you know, you should accept your body and how you look the way it is, you know, you, you need to accept who you are and, you know, accept your identity, whatever it is, accept who you are and not be ashamed of who you are. And like, you know, they really preached that to me when I was very young. And be like, kind of like self-care, you know? No matter how different you are from other people, no matter whether you don't look like a normal person or are a normal person, you are a normal person. If anything, you're not normal, you know what? You're extraordinary. And that was something that I was taught, but my, uh, my one friend, and he walked up to me, he was talking to me, and I've known him since high school, but he talked to me, he's like, I always feel insecure every time I meet this lady or whatnot, because when I talk to this lady and stuff like that, or talk to, like, girls or whatnot, I always feel like I'm ugly, or that I'm unattractive, and I feel very insecure about it, and, like, I'm trying really hard to love myself and how I look and stuff like that. 
and like he was like other people they make it look so easy and he asked me he's like i need your advice you know what do girls you know find attractive in a guy what is this and, and, and all that kind of stuff and i was like you need to stop right there because what you're doing is asking me for your permission or approval in how you should look what you should be doing is looking for your own approval looking inward in yourself and thinking to yourself that I am perfect the way I am you know and I told him because he was like I hate my face he's like I hate how my eyebrows look they're so like bushy I look like a a fucking sash wash sometime and like I told him I said well this is what I did if I ever felt like I looked too weird or you know looked too this way or looked too that way especially um I'll give you because this is personal but it's okay you know I'm okay I'm open with it my mom in her side of family has spider veins probably can't even see it because it's a low quality camera but like if you look up what spider veins are, they're like veins that kind of pop a little bit out of your skin if your skin's too pale, um, or whatnot, or like even like, I wouldn't consider them stretch marks because, you know, spider veins are more hereditary, but just veins that kind of like pop out, and like as you get older and stuff like that, they kind of pop out, but I have like one here, one like over here on my thigh, but like, I was a little bit upset about that because like you know spider veins like you think of someone really older to have them or someone who's unattractive because you don't have the smooth all color looking you know skin you know like you don't have like those things on an air commercial you know and I looked at myself and like because I run a lot and stuff like that so like I think that's also too you know little bits of it too I have some right here as well too but um I looked into the mirror, I reassess it to myself, and I think to myself, well, yeah, they're spider bangs. I noticed them. But, what do they do, you know? They're not like sitting there and like, oh, wow, you're ugly or whatnot. Now this is just me. Or, oh, wow, you know, like, I don't belong in an air commercial because I have all this, but like, who would want to, like, hold themselves to an impossible standard? You know what I mean? Who would want to think to themselves that I'll never be good enough for anything? Like, you wouldn't tell anyone that they're not good enough for anything. You wouldn't want to tell anyone that they're ugly just because they have spider veins. So it's kind of like being kind to yourself and remembering to yourself, like, You shouldn't hold yourself to a standard. You shouldn't hold yourself to some sort of um, thing or attractive level, you know? And also, too, like, I also thought of it, too. Well, like, what do my legs do for me? And it's also, like, this is kind of, like, a little bit more weird or existential or whatnot or whatever. But um, I tend to think of it this way, you know? Like, my legs... Like, the spider, this, these spider veins are just not even a purpose of my legs, you know? Like, my legs help me get from point A to point B, you know? They are a part of my body, and they help my body, you know what I mean? And, like, when I'm thinking about my legs and stuff like that, my spider veins, they don't, like, you know, function with my legs, you know? Like, they're, like they're just there. I tend to think of them as just decoration. And you know, like, and also too, like, I tend to think of them as a characteristic. So like when you go into a house and like it's a little bit older, you know, the windows are a weird kind of like panel and stuff like that. It's like a little bit of a characteristic or like the door doesn't shut as it once did or like it just kind of looks like the wood is kind of you know, fading in, but it's still functional. It's characteristic. And your body should have character. You know, yourself should have character. If anything, it just makes you extraordinary and different. And like, 
I could go on and on and on about this, but I also think of it too like, now that now this is gonna sound weird, but it's kind of like how many people in this world have spider veins? Yes, me, and there's other people too. But also too, like, nobody has it the way that I do, you know? I tend to think, I call this my snowflake theory, so just listen to me out. But there are millions of people in this world, but there's no one like me. And whether you look different because you look like you have Sasquatch eyebrows, or whether you feel like you look different because you have spider veins, you are different. And there's nothing wrong with being different. And you are more than just Sasquatch. You are more than just spider veins. You are more than what people look at you as, you know, you're more than weird hair, or um, loss of hair, or um, different hair, because I know like a lot of, I don't want to be too cultural, but like it happens where like a lot of, you know, people think that their natural hair is ugly just because it's not the standard beach waves, or like, you know, like if their hair is too thin, it's not the standard thickness or volume, you know? but it makes you you. It's a beautiful characteristic of you. It's like when you look at a house and it's like that one thing that is like charming about you. And it's something that's really, like I can go on and on about this, but like think of yourself as a pretty little snowflake, you know? And also, too, you know, I think you are more than just what you look like. I feel like that's something that helped me a lot whenever I felt really weird or something like that. I am more than what I look like, you know? And I'm grateful, because, like, these just don't show, like, a oh, passage of time. They also show memories leading up to that point. Or like my family, you know, hereditary, a family characteristic. You know, it shows that I'm part of something, I'm part of who I am, but I'm also a representation of something too, you know? And how you are represented and how you look deserves utmost praise. Whether or not you don't fit into a category or whatnot, you know? You are your own category, and you should remember that. Now, I know I could probably went on really rambling, but um, I just hope that when you go to bed tonight, or whenever you do go to bed, that you look into the mirror, and you just look at yourself, and you think to yourself that there is no one out there like me, and I am my own representation. No one should ever make me feel bad for how I am or how I look. And also too that you are beautiful because you can say so many things to yourself. To you say that you're this, you're that, you're this and that. But um, beauty is not set to one standard. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder and you shouldn't be focused on what other people tell you is attractive or beautiful. But if you know that it's beautiful, and that you feel beautiful, then there's no other convincing, there's no other background noise that could ever change that, you know, what do you think? So yeah, it's going on for 40 minutes about so I'm just going to, you know, log off now and kind of help my buns get ready for bed because I fed them some dinner and it's getting a little dark out. But yeah, you shouldn't set yourself to a standard and you should let other people put you down or make you feel like you should be anything but yourself.
So I hope that helped me in my ramblings and my over, you know, positivity. That's okay, you know. Positive is nice. Positive is good. So I hope this helps. And I hope that you stay hydrated and that you have a wonderful day tomorrow. I bring the buns to say, you know, wave, but they're probably sleeping. So yeah, I'm just going to say bye to the next one.